Next on the College Rugby Wrap-Up, CRAA men's and women's action. College players turned Eagles making an impact overseas and college players in Major League Rugby. Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by Sheehy Auto Stores. It's easy at Sheehy. The Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pump, and Lean and Limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Hey everybody and welcome back to this week's Rugby Wrap-Up. Thank you for joining us. I'm Matt McCarthy in New York City. I've got Josh Ressio on the road someplace. Josh, we know that you don't have time. Your agent said that you have to go first because you've got other commitments. So we're going to skip the, uh, the back and forth here and just get right to you with your CRAA men's stuff. Take it. Thanks, Matt. I'm glad my, uh, my agent was able to get a hold of your people. Um, sorry for the mishap, but... Glad we're still able to get some uh, rugby segment out this week. So let's let's go ahead and get it started. So starting in the mid south, we got Life Rugby back. They took on Arkansas State in a game that in previous years, you know, you could have looked at Arkansas State with the hell the recruiting they've been doing. They've been bringing in a lot of international talent. Um, you know, thought it would be a little bit of a closer game. Life was able to take on take the win, thirty to eight behind Bradley Crane. Went three for three for penalties and three for three on conversions. Scored half the points for Life. Um, if it wasn't Bradley Crane that was egging on his team, you could have looked at another broadcast here we have in uh, U.S. Collegiate Rugby where they were pretty much rooting for the home team the whole way. So uh, we're going to have to, if we're going to continue having these broadcast games, I can only imagine uh, what sort of swing they have in the game themselves. But it's been exciting to at least be able to watch rugby um, live and not have to be there in person all the time. Life now is going to be taking on Lindenwood. Now, Lindenwood in years past, now, Lindenwood is an amazing seven school, always, always that kind of like cow like team that we're looking at to take home sevens championships. But in the 15s world, Lindenwood has been right there with life every year. Some of the best games we've seen. Um, and I expect the exact same thing um, this time around. Lindenwood had some fall games on their schedule. So this team has been playing a lot of rugby life didn't have as much. But, you know, I really look for a close game. I'm going to go ahead and throw throw it out there that I think Lindenwood's going to pull off the upset. So catch me next week if I have to eat my words. But I'm going to go ahead and go Lindenwood over life. And what I would say is probably the biggest game we've had so far in this uh, early spring schedule. Moving out west now, we had another blog game with Cal Poly taking on Santa Clara. 67 to 17. I'm slowly getting a little bit tired of every California game being uh, 60 plus. 60 plus point swing for one team, but um, it's really cool to see Cal Poly, you know, coming off those, coming off that tough loss at the beginning of the season. Uh, scrum half Frank Lucy was able to get the hat trick and, you know, Cal Poly is probably going to be that, you know, that team that we start to see underneath, you know, Cal UCLA. I, do, do we think they're going to be able to beat those teams? It's, it's not looking like it yet, but uh, you know, they're kind of in that second tier that we're starting to see that we've seen in other conferences like the big 10, where you have Michigan state trying to battle it out versus Ohio state, Indiana, and Wisconsin. Lastly, if, if we're going to have California, that is, you know, having blowouts every week, at least we get some competitive games over in Arizona Arizona last week was able to get that comeback win over UCLA. This week, they decided to take on their, what we could call new rivals in Grand Canyon. Um, they've been having some pretty awesome games over the past, over the past year since Grand Canyon was able to, you know, establish their rugby team. And uh, this game ended in a tie, 28 to 28. Um, ties are never fun. I've had a tie in college. Everyone's very confused. Sometimes we start to think there's going to be overtime. Not in this game. Uh Unlike last week where, you know, UCLA kind of let the game go, uh, Sean Duffy's got to be a little bit sad this week because Arizona had this one in the bag. They were up 28 to 13 and they had a 15 to 12 advantage after penalties. Grand Canyon just could not stop getting penalties and Arizona really had an opportunity to put this game away, but they could not do it. Arizona's going to have more of these of these big matchups on their schedule, so I'm not really too worried about Arizona losing this game. I think they proved a lot last week by beating UCLA. So tying Grand Canyon is not the end of the world. These two are going to be great rivals, and you know, preferably a, a, a big rivalry that we're going to see every year um, in the U.S. kind of spring schedule. But really for rugby in a week where, you know, it was a lot of postponements, a lot of canceled games. I know, you know, we're trying to get back into the full swing of rugby and we're getting so close, so many cool games coming on. Um, those were kind of those big three that we uh, 
that we had to watch. So I'll send it back to you, Matt, and everyone else back in the studio, and I'll see you guys next week. All right, thank you, Josh. Now we're going to liberate from the sin bin slash green room. Who uh, the two men, our colleagues Zach Lanning and jo- and Colby Marshall, who have been <laughs> faffing about guys. You just heard Josh talking about the CRAA men's action. Now, Zach, you're going to pick it up with the women's. Yeah, that's right, guys. So, uh, women again, still, you know, not a full slate of matches. We're waiting for the season to really kick into gear. Uh, only one of the D1 elite programs was in action this weekend, and that was Life University women's side. They saw what Cal did last week, winning twice in one day, and they said, what if we won three times in one day, guys? Would that be uh, more impressive? Would that get us on the show? Uh, so they did play three scrimmages on Saturday. It was only three 30-minute periods, uh, but they won them all. They beat USA South 1, USA South 2, and the Capital Rugby Football Union, Capital RFU. Uh, so a big day for, for life on, on that front. Then, just for good measure, they sent a JV side down to Florida to play Florida State and the University of Florida, uh, beating both of those teams as well on Saturday and Sunday. So uh, maybe you, you could even call it five wins, probably for Life University women uh, on Sunday. Now, we're keeping an eye out, again, on all the action coming up. Some of the other D1 Elite programs don't start until later this month. Uh, Lindenwood, Penn State, women, uh, C- uh, CWU. So stay with us for, for you know, further action uh, on the women's front. Uh, but life, you know, putting out uh, some strong contender vibes so far early in the spring. Can't wait to see what else they do. And now much of a surprise, right? Life has always been dominant on both the men's side and women's side. Yeah, just unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah, guys, it is crazy that they continue this dominance, uh, but something that may be key to that going forward, uh, head coach Rosalind Chow has announced that she will be leaving the program at the end of this season and taking the job at Brown uh, to see if she can help the Brown Bears overcome Dartmouth and Harvard in the Ivy League. Uh, but so she, she has said that she's going to be moving on. She's led them to a lot of success recently. Uh, they'll be opening up a national search when Rosalind departs, uh, looking for that next coach to lead life into the future. So definitely keep an eye on that. And we'll see if life continues to be as dominant as they have uh, after Coach Chow moves on. Yeah, Brown pouring money into that rugby program on both the men's and women's side. Watch for them to be rising up that ladder quickly. Yeah, Matt. And another team you could say that has started off hot this season so far, BYU, uh, the women's program at BYU, the Cougars have started off 2-0, and winning their opening match of the season against interconference rivals Grand Canyon University, 109 to nothing. Uh, that's right, 109 to zero. They had a run of 17 unanswered tries in that match. Uh, just dominating their interconference rival. And then they followed that up with a win this weekend against UC Santa Barbara. They didn't do as well, Matt. They only won 96 to nothing. Uh, so they missed that 100 point mark, but still, still look very dominant so far this season. Uh, and they should have a very strong case for, for a national championship, possibly later on this season. They are in, in mid season form and they're only two matches in. All right, guys, we got to stop it there. We got to pay some bills. So let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Need a great price on a new vehicle? Sheehy makes it easy. Easy Price shows you our lowest prices on the Mid Atlantic's largest selection. Find your best price online or at any of our 31 dealerships. It's easy at Sheehy. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig & Whistle, on West 36th Street. I've been blind since I was four, and I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste, and my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has a taste on the flavor. What do you think's on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. Guys, we're back, but it's that time of the day. It's time for your Sheehy Auto Stores pop-up quiz. And I'm going to ask you guys a question, and you're going to answer the question, and we'll find out who's right and wrong. Gentlemen, the third president of the United States of America was... Zach, go ahead. John Adams. Colby. Washington Grover. 
Unfortunately, we have no winner in this week's Sheehy Auto <laughs> Stores pop-up quiz with these two college graduates. The answer for the folks at home that might be in a coma, like my colleagues here on the panel, is it is indeed Thomas Jefferson. Let's go now back to the rugby. It's easy, it's she -he, she -he .com. Colby, you've got something that's going to tie the college game to the professional game for us in talking about recent college grads slash draft picks that have been doing stuff in the MLR, Major League Rugby. Talk talk to us, baby. Talk to us. Yeah, I mean, how cool is that to see? It was not too long ago that we were covering the most recent MLR draft that took place. And now with Major League Rugby back in full swing, we're able to see some of those guys in action. Let's start off with the Dallas Jackals who were in action over the weekend. Two of my guys, Eric Naposki, who went number one overall, the fullback from UCLA, got the nod at 14 for them as well as Aaron Gray, somebody that I've gotten to know really well over the past couple of months. The second round pick out of cuts down started opposite of Naposki on the other wing for the Jackals on Saturday. And they also had a lineup that featured Michael Matarazzo, who went to uh, Rugby ATL in the first round of the 2020 MLR draft out of Notre Dame College. And Bronson Tellis, Colby, I think he was out of the 2020 draft uh, and to, from Arizona, right? Correct. Bronson Tellis was also featured in that lineup. So a lot of a lot of young guys uh, for the Dallas Jackals um, to, to, to watch this season. It's going to be exciting. Additionally, for Seattle, Tavide Lopetti, the first round Raging Bull center out of St. Mary's, got the nod at 12. Also for them, Martin Osefo, who played college ball at the University of Montana, was in that starting 15 as well. Yeah, they looked very good in that Seattle back line. You've got, you got some firepower in that back line. Great, great night for them. Big win at Starfire. They're saying that Seattle back line might be the one of the tallest back lines uh, in rugby history, actually. Everybody over six feet on that back line. Uh, and then you have Ross Neal from England, I think, who's like 6'5". So, uh, but they're definitely a powerful squad. His strides to that, tr that, that try, the pick off, the pick five, as they say, was incredible. He just, he was he's eating up the field with each gallop. But you also had uh, George Sharp, right, from NOLA? George Sharp, yeah, he went in the first round out of Arkansas State. He made the match 23, didn't not didn't get the nod in the starting lineup, but was on the team sheet. Additionally, first round selection from 2020, Brian Nolt, the prop from Central Washington, came off the bench for the NOLA gold as well. NOLA did start uh, former college standout Charlie Wheeler, of course, from Life University. Uh, who also won the Rudy Schultz Award in 2019, as well as Malcolm May from Penn State. And, and, and Old Glory, Colby. Yeah, Old Glory DC. Uh, Labby Koi Larvey, the third round pick out of Penn State. A lot of Nittany Lions uh, featured over the weekend. He did make the match day 23 for Old Glory DC. And who could forget, Penn Stater Mike DeBoulis. He started at fly half and really had a good game. Yeah, it's exciting to see the young blood, the young college guys get some action, you know, countering those arguments that we're only playing people from overseas, right, Zach? Yeah, that's right. And and Mike DeBull is somebody to keep an eye on for me going forward, sliding into that 10 spot for Old Glory, uh, filling the shoes of Jason Robertson, uh, who, according to advertisements during the broadcast, may never have left, uh, but he actually did leave and go to Europe. Uh, and those are huge shoes to fill, you know, uh, trying to help Danny Tusatala in that 9-10 connection. Mike DeBullis seemed to me in that game to, to really step up uh, and, and fill that, that slot. You know, he's got a shot with the Eagles as well recently. Uh, so he's definitely a name to watch. And, and it is really good, I agree, to, to kind of see all this uh, homegrown talent, uh, you know, in the league. And that didn't even, you know, we didn't even see a f number one first overall pick ever, Connor Mooneyham, this weekend. Uh, but there is a lot of, lot of really good young talent in the league at this point. Yeah, you know, Colby, you could also talk about Bryce Campbell, who was all all American out of Indiana, and he's a stud with Austin. I know, as you just said, Zach Mooneyham didn't play. And then you've got Houston, Colby. Yeah, none of their 2021 draft picks made the starting uh, final 23 for them, but they did have three former Cal standouts uh, in the team, and Nick Boyer, Christian Dyer, and Danny Barrett, who came off the bench. Emmanuel Albert, the the you know flanker from Lindenwood, who was expected to go number one overall and expected to make a pretty solid contribution, taken by Houston at second overall. You know, I'm hoping he can he can make that roster sometime soon. He was a real talent. I'm hoping to be able to see him on the pitch at some point. It's going to be tough for him to, I think, make an impression in the starting 15 with the likes of Jakob Izwiedenhut, who was the man of the match over the weekend, uh, starting at flanker and 
expected to play so well for them. But at the same time, Emmanuel Albert can learn so much from a player like that and will certainly benefit from having someone like that on the squad. And again, we'll be keeping an eye on those players going forward, but we are basically out of time on this college rugby wrap up. Zach, final thoughts. Yeah, man, just to agree with you, can't wait to, you know, mention some more of these names on here, but I do also want to shout out a couple uh, of the USA women's Eagles who were playing overseas and had a great weekend. Uh, not necessarily former college rugby stars, definitely former college athletes uh, being the first one. Alev Kelter was a two sport varsity athlete in college, University of Wisconsin. She was named the match uh, player of the match in Saracen's 22 to eight win over the Harlequins this weekend. She had seven points from the tee and she has just been demolishing people uh, over there. It's been really fun to watch. Uh, and then the stalwart Kate Zachary, like one of the most famous uh, USA Eagles, I think in a long time has just been killing it overseas for the longest of, of almost anybody, I would say say she had another great weekend at number eight scoring three tries a hat trick uh in exeter's 36 22 win over gloucester harpery uh there are a lot a lot more usa women joining these uh these players overseas in europe uh some former college talent as well carly waters played at penn state um so you know you're going to see a lot more of that going forward as well definitely keep an eye on the women's premier league over in europe yeah, and as always, A.J. McGinty right in the middle of another sale victory. And my man, Greg Peterson, logging another 80-minute match playing second row. Good to see these Eagles doing well overseas. More for these college players to aspire to, not only professionally, but on the national team. Colby, do you have anything on that? Yeah, I was just going to say it's really cool to see my man Aaron Gray in the starting lineup for the Dallas Shackles, uh, the rising team in the MLR. And I know that. If I'm going to talk about somebody from Cutstown, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention anything about anybody from Iona and how I'm extremely excited to see Rugby United in action, to see Connor Buckley and John Powers rain hell on the MLR. Go Gales. And I'll counter with my man, Will Burke, out of the University of Buffalo for Atlanta. And on that note, we're out of time. I want to thank Mr. Josh Ressio. Mr. Zach Lanning and Mr. Colby Marshall, and thank you for tuning in. Please sign up for our weekly newsletter, and please check out our other segments, including our Major League Rugby show and the Rugby Odds, telling you how to gamble all your money away. And please, please, please sign up for our Rugby Wrap-Up American Red Cross Blood Donor Team.